Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. We have a special program I promised you earlier uh, about uh, bird feeder station ideas. This was a request from the internet. Uh, people said, I love to see other people's backyards and how their poles are set up and how they display their feeders and offer bird, food, water, and shelter for birds. And if you could maybe do a program and feature some of that and let's, let, let us see them, uh, hey, that's a great idea because everybody's backyard's different. Everybody's uh, method of you know, displaying or offering food up for birds is different. And, you know, that's the number one question we get asked here whenever, especially people that are just getting into bird feeding, they always ask, where should I put our bird feeders? The que answer to that question for me has always been where you can see them. They, you know, you're putting those up for your enjoyment, your family's enjoyment. They're, they're good for your mental health. They're good for stress release. They're, they're just wonderful additions to your backyard. But if they're somewhere where you can't see them, then you're not going to get the enjoyment out of them that you really, really deserve. Yes, the birds need it, especially in stretches of harsh weather like we've just had. Um, they, they really, really need that unfrozen water and they really need that seed. But displaying them, I mean, if you're not getting that pleasure out of getting to watch them, then I'm sorry, and, and, and a lot of it is for moot. You know, the point is moot, I guess, is what I would say. So what I thought we would do, we'd go through several um, circumstances in here, uh, starting in my backyard. This is a, an older shot of my feeder station, but this is my feeder station. Um, and I think the focal point here is I have raccoon baffles on my poles. Because I would definitely have raccoon issues if I did not have, because you know, we live right up against a bunch of trees and the raccoon numbers are pretty impressive and they would be up these poles in a heartbeat. So raccoon baffles are really important. Now, if you'll notice, I got a crawl, the old crossbar set up and I love it. Unfortunately, the company that made these T connectors here for each end, don't make that anymore. So to do this kind of a setup, if you want to do your pole systems that way, you kind of have to improvise and you have to use plumbing supplies a lot of times to set this up. And I've had customers who do that, use our poles, but they have to kind of customize this connection across here. And I love I love my setup. I mean, you know, I've got three prong heads and two two prong heads is what my features now, but various feeders on there. So um, just the way it worked out in my yard. So let's go through a couple others here this where that is that was right in front of your family room oh Ruth is reminding me that yeah that it that is right outside my family window my picture window so that, that it is the focal point of our living room looking out and the feeders are on our level which is really important to me because the last <laughs> two houses that we lived in it was was not nearly as good as nature viewing as as this house is and so the proximity to the trees the bird activity um, and being able to view them is really important there so yeah they're right in front of our family room windows now this this is another feeder situation that was sent in i love it they, they have a pergola i think this is called is that the, i think the word for it is an overhang and she's got feeders hanging from underneath there but and she also has a, a, a table tray out here that she uses to, to to feed on but look at the number of birds on the ground they you know i'm sorry people forget about the ground as being a bird feeder the ground is a very very important bird feeder and so you know their grounds covered in cardinals you know and snow oh my gosh it brings them in like crazy as you know this past couple of weeks um, and she also has lots of trays on her feeders and out here in her yard she has a couple of shepherd's hooks with baffles on them as well very smart idea there and then uh, another customer sent this in. This is a, a unique kind of a setup. Uh, he's got his bird bath down here, looks like, um, but he's got a three prong head, uh, and he's and he's offered diversity in feeders. He's got a couple of um, tube feeders there, and then a Niger feeder. Again, the importance of a baffle. We, almost every one of these pictures you see have baffles in them. And one of the things I think this is neat here um, is that yes, feed holes will kill the grass especially if you let them build up over time. Now, we always advocate uh, raking up your excess seed holes at least two or three times a year and throwing those away or packing them in the trash and getting rid of them. Uh, but the acidity in the seed holes over time will kill the grass. I think that may be what part of this logic here is, which is really neat. So you don't have to worry about uh, killing grass underneath there. It's a nice setup. Let's see. 
Uh, another three-prong head set up. I think I've got a bigger shot of the rest of this of his yard, but um, this is kind of a, it looks like his finch sec finch area here. He's got three finch feeders on here together. Um, the 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 tube tops are just wonderful addition. The number one accessory in my store I love the tube tops. It helps keep the, that seed dry. It's not a hundred percent effective, but boy, it sure helps. And you know, it, it costs money to lose seed to moisture. So the tube tops are really work well here. Is another uh, uh, of uh, Fisk's um, poles. He's got multi seed peanut and suet on this pole in the same yard. And here we got a peanut feeder and a multi-seed feeder, and then a tray down here mounted on that pole, which is really great. They see the morning dove in it, which is uh, uh, they, they like those big flat surfaces. So offering up a lot of different situations: a bird bath, heated bird bath. Uh, again, the, the illustration of that tube top feeder. I think this is a safflower feeder, help keeping that, and they, they, the birds in the snow will tuck up underneath that. All right, so got to go back. Oop. This is a, a, one version in my yard uh, of the spring, obviously with the Oriole feeders. Uh, I've got a peanut feeder back here, but a couple of different Oriole feeders and my squirrel buster. This squirrel buster uh, is actually, I had to move it onto here because I had it hanging in the trees back here and the raccoons kept getting it off of the hook and dropping it to the ground. So I finally just moved it onto the, the pole with the, uh, with the raccoon baffle on it. And I love this fly through feeder on the crossbar. The cardinals and the rose breasted grosbeaks, a lot of it. This is the workhorse of the station. Everybody can come in here and feed in here. So this that's a neat addition. Beautiful shot uh, of a Harris sparrow in the spring on this, on this Niger feeder. And there there is a, a mini mag in the back. It's a great uh, feeder set up there. Oh, that's what I started out with. Multiple feeders on a pole. This is a, a, a neat setup. I, I, this one I had. They don't have many that are illustrate four by fours. Uh, four by fours are great for playing uh, bird feeders. And and this is a, a former employee of mine. Now lives in Florida, and he, uh, he's got a raccoon baffle on it that's made for the four by four. We have raccoon baffles for one inch diameter poles and for four by four baffles, four by four poles. And he's uh, he's just taken a four by four, decorated it up a bit, and then four uh, angle arms there that he's got a good diversity of feeders on there. He's got his cage feeder to keep his blackbirds out of and the starlings out of, um, and, and another tube feeder here and a squirrel buster here. Really nice setup um, and, and down there. And you see all the pine trees in the background, so you know it's not around here. All right, and this. I call this backyard heaven here. This is Teresa Hay, one of our customers, Teresa Havens' backyard. Beautiful setup. Uh, multiple feeders here. The, the cover tray, Carrie has this in her yard. She loves it. The tray, the big tray and the hood on it. Notice the raccoon baffles. And this is a squirrel baffle, raccoon baffles here. Multiple feeders. She has, she has the crossbar set up like I do uh, on there. So just you know you can it's just up to your imagination you can uh, you can just have all kind of things this is uh carrie's backyard i think this is a, a year or two old picture but but this is her bird bath in the foreground but this is her brush pile because you see how open her yard is and it was it didn't provide enough cover for a lot of birds so she built that brush pile to help and she's got feeders within the brush pile and then and she adds to it during the year you know it'll start to fall apart a little bit and then she uh, builds it back up again and this is a magnet for birds and they, they have a safe haven for them there in her backyard and, uh, that's an older picture of my yard this is an under the eave shot uh, this is my backyard looking out at my bird feeders but my hummingbird feeder hangs under the eave in front of my window i just love under the eaves the right squirrels and raccoons can't climb the glass um, and, and it's a very safe place for especially uh, nectar feeders like hummingbird feeders and oriole feeders because they, they, they want to get to those raccoons especially have the sweet tooth like no other and they want to get into that sugar water but under the eave is a great place and this is a, a friend up in uh, Farley and, and, and she and I don't know if you can see uh, well that deck, deck railing is covered in goldfinches and the ground is covered in goldfinches among other other species on there too. They had white throated sparrows and cardinals and things like that. But again, the, the, using the, just a tray on her on a table on her deck, uh, great way to feed birds. Getting a lot of the, this is a little table little table sitting out uh, that's just covered in bird seed. 
And you got a nice flock of house finches there visiting that. So that is, uh, and the peanuts are out there for the blue jays to come in. Um, they, just an idea for setting up another pole setup with a good diversity of feeders on there. This is just right on the deck railing. I've shown this picture before of a customer who just put out a bunch of old fruit and a, a Pyrex dish and the cedar wax wings discovered it. And it's something that's not a, typically a bird feeder, but a way to, to feed the birds. And this is a, a, a friend of mine up in uh, Leavenworth who uh, had this built for his deck. Uh, kind of a neat way to display several different feeders across there. Uh, yeah, it, it's got a, a standard deck arm, but he also has a custom built one too. It's an easy way to do that. Uh, a classic uh, uh, big open tray feeder up uh, in the northern part of the state there. And this is Ruth's house underneath her eaves. Again, feeding under the eaves in front of windows. Very, very effective. Um, the birds will come right in. It may take them a little bit to get used to, but not very long. And once one bird starts feeding there, usually the chickadees and everybody else follow suit and comes right in, and it's safe. And this is a whole bunch of bird feeders in, in Ruth's backyard. Count one, two, three, 36 inch spirals. And they, that's somebody who feeds a lot of finches. <laughs> She's a, and got a good diversity of feeders there. Um, a pole set up with a bunch of morning doves on the tray and then right underneath the ground this is next to her brush pile that she has built i don't know if you can tell how many morning doves are all the way around <laughs> they're lined all the way around the brush pile uh, eating the millet off the ground they love it so there's lots of different ways to feed birds and there you, you don't have the one there's not one that's right and one's wrong they're just people wanted ideas on different ways to to do it and had to prevent present their feeders don't forget about the ground. Don't forget about under the eaves of your houses in front of picture windows. Um, the you know, pole setups are wonderful. There's platform feeders. There's tube feeders. There's lots of different ways to do it. And this was just the idea here was just to give you some ideas and to look at other people's yards. You know, I want to. I've always wanted to do. I, when I first bought the business, we we. we that first year I started talking about doing a backyard bird feeder tour, like a garden tour. And I really wanted to do that, but we never could make it happen. Uh, and most of the time it's because it's gonna, the best time is to do it in, in uh, the winter whenever the, the weather's hard to, to, uh, to plan around. But that was, you know, that's an idea, just for people to go around and see how other people feeders work. And this is my solution to that, being able to do that and share this with you. So it's a great idea for a program. I really thank you for the, the, that recommendation. We got uh, people are sending in more now. That's a great idea. I have a question. Deb Schumann wants to know, how do I keep the squirrels out of my bird feeders? Yep. Again, the question is about keeping squirrels out of bird feeders. And I'm going to put a link up there for you um, after we get this loaded up on the Internet. Uh, to a couple of videos I've done about keeping squirrels out of feeders. But again, under the eave, keeps them out. The squirrel baffles and raccoon baffles, as long as they're 10 feet out in your yard, there were no jumping avenue on top of your feeder pole, those, those baffles work really well. So yeah, I'll, I'll put a link below for that and, um, and you can take a look at that video. So I really appreciate it. Send in more ideas for programs. Give us a like, give us a share. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Until then, come on, let's talk birds.